Okay, this is a negative I'm going to print up. It's a, a sale um, with, from my last show. So it's a reprint. A beautiful shot of La Cascade d'Ars. And this is the negative. Negative means blacks are white and whites are black. This is my enlarger. And here's my negative carrier. It's a 4x5 negative carrier. Hmm. Here's my negative. Beautiful negative. Great shot. Now I'm going to put it in my negative carrier. And you put it in upside down. And this thing keeps the negative really nice and flat. It's a good thing. And then I blow off the dust. And I inspect it over here under the light like this, and like that, and, uh, and like that. Now I put it in the enlarger, and I make sure the negative is properly seated. And I put it up at the proximate height here, which is uh, 22 inches. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to line up the negative on my easel here. Turn the mine larger on. I usually have it wide open. And I just make sure that I line up the enlarger properly so I maximize the uh, negative and um, the composition is as good as possible. Mm. And that's basically, and I have to do a focus here. So I use my uh, grain focuser, and that's really good for focusing. And I really concentrate on focusing big time. Because focusing is the most difficult part of photography. So I focus in the center, and then I check the corners. Make sure that my enlarger is properly lined up all the planes. There's three planes. There's the paper plane, the lens plane, and the negative plane. And all those three planes have to be perfectly flat and lined up for it to be properly focused. <coughs> and it's really important to have a nicely focused image. And that is absolutely perfect. And I line it up nicely, like this. And I make sure I'm not cutting any of the edges. And this is just perfectly done. Okay, my notes say, the last time I printed this, that it's uh, contrast number two. So now I'm going to put in my uh, contrast filter. So I take out the tray. And I get my number two contrast filter. And here's my number two. I keep everything really clean. In the old days, you, know, you used to get graded paper where you didn't have to work with contrast filters. And that is my preference. But now that uh, silver gelatin isn't so well, uh, used uh, the, the very limited in marketing and uh, what's available in the in the industry okay so now I can do my test strip so now I got my uh, paper and I will uh, slice a piece off of the paper and this is going to be my test strip and I will now expose my test strip. I always have to put the paper away so I don't expose it with the light. Here's my paper, 
my exposure is set, everything is set like according to my nose, and it's a one and a half second exposure. Now I check where I'm going to do the exposure, so I always try and get the highest highs and the lowest lows, and uh, so it's going to be right here like this. And make sure it's the right side up on the paper because there's always one side that has a gelatin, the other doesn't. And this is a long exposure, one and a half minutes. And here we go. So now I'm exposing my test paper and I try not to uh, touch the enlarger or the uh, enlarging table. And now I'm doing my test strip. And there's my timer. Okay, I just did uh, expose my test strip. It's a wide shot of Cascade d'Ars, and I'm going to start processing my test strip. I put it swiftly in the developer. It was a long exposure of 1 minute and 45 seconds, and I'm agitating it for 15 seconds. At 25 seconds, 20 and 25 seconds, it should start to move. Come on in here, show it to us. See? Now the image is starting to form. Now at 30 seconds, I agitate it for another 10 seconds. That's good. And the image is uh, forming nicely. And I put it in the developer for one and a half minutes instead of, usually it's two minutes, but my notes indicate that I want a softer image because the uh, negative is pretty dense. It's a lot of contrast. So you can actually lower the contrast by putting it in the developer for less amount of time. So this is one minute. I agitate it for 10 seconds. And I will pull it out five seconds before the one and a half minutes to drip it. So it drips properly. And here we go. And that's one and a half minutes. Now it goes straight into the stop bath. Again. Now it's in the fix, and by eye, it seems pretty good. You know, the contrast and the range, even though I'm viewing it under red lights. But um, so far it looks so good, so I'm just going to leave it there for a good 40 seconds to clear as much of the silver halide salts as possible so I get a good uh, technical test strip so I can base my printing on that test strip. Of course it's really important when you're making the print to do exactly the same with the print as you did to the test strip. The only compensation is that it comes out of the developer five seconds earlier than test strips. Okay, let's turn on the light and see what I got. Wow, it looks beautiful from here. I'll put it in the water. The paper is wet and gives you nice blacks and the highs are a little more um, white generally. Uh, so yeah, you can't really um, make a good decision on a wet test print. So what I usually do is I put it in the microwave to dry off the test prints which will give me a better and truer recognition of um, 
what it's going to look like when it's dry. So here's my microwave. And then I'll just put my test strip in there. It's about one and a half minutes on a relatively low setting. I don't want it to be crisp but dry. Now I go wash my hands. All right, so here's my test strip. It's dry. It's the first test strip. And all my highs go up to the highest highs. And my lows have good densities. Nice blacks there. And it's, it looks like there's really nice volume all around. And it looks like I'm pretty lucky on my first test strip to um, get this uh, definition. Of course, I was using the previous notes for the first print that I made, which I sold. And that's why I'm making a second print, too. Uh, because I sold the first print. So it's perfect. So I'm just going to write down the technical details for my printing. And then I'll make the print. Okay, so it's rolly paper and contrast is one and a half. And the height is 22.1. And it's my condenser head, set at a 4x5 negative. It's f5.6. So the lens is wide open. And the exposure is 145, 1 minute 45 seconds. And it's 130 in the dectal. 130, 2 to 1, dectal 2 to 1. And I now I'm going to compensate for my corners as usual because the corners are usually about one stop uh, colder than the rest of the picture but I don't want to make a long exposure of uh, three minutes so I'm going to expose the corners for two and a half minutes instead of uh, one minute and 30 seconds because it'd be double of 145 so I have to dodge it from 230 to 145 and that's my print and I marked down that I used another paper okay